Hey everyone, Ryan here, or MNR Productions, and welcome to my review of the LEGO Star Wars 2022 Republic Fighter Tank. Given set number 75342 with 262 pieces, this one will set you back $40 in the United States. It is the first set with the newer box art based on the Clone Wars, so it brings the Ahsoka Clone Trooper down there on the bottom left for our accent figure. And then for the accent color, they have chosen the yellowish-orange color, same as Star Wars Black Series action figures. So need to see LEGO following in Hasbro's footsteps there because it's a really smart way to do things. Anyway, it's not immediately obvious to me which planet this is taking place on, but certainly a deserty landscape with some mountains in the background. We got some purple 187th clones shown front and center, some battle droids, of course the beautiful Mace Windu figure with arm printing who we'll take a look at momentarily, and then the Republic fighter tank with the commander atop it. Here's your side box art, which has been one of my favorite things about LEGO Star Wars box arts in recent years, and the back of the box shows the minifigs playing in different ways as well as all the play features for the set. Let's unbox it. Inside we'll find two number one bags, a number two bag, a rather large looking sticker sheet for a set of this size, and of course the instruction manual. The first character in the set of which there are two of is the battle droid. We all know battle droids. These ones in particular do come with gunmetal gray blasters instead of black blasters, if that matters to you. But yes, two battle droids in the set. This is far and away the best Mace Windu minifigure we've ever had. And at that, in only a $40 set, if only there was another set that had come out recently that could have had a really good Mace Windu minifig. But I just, it escapes my mind at this point. But it, this is, look, seriously, this is a really cool minifig. And I am really happy that we have this. It has the Clone Wars armor, of course. You can see it kind of printed onto the armor there so arm printing mace windu for the first time this is fantastic to see he of course has like kind of an angry face look to him and since he's bald he doesn't get a second facial expression but that's okay that's to be expected with mace windu another thing a lot of people have been talking about though is the frosted purple lightsaber and it might not be something immediately apparent but if we bring over misprinted 2005 light up mace windu you can see the difference in the i don't know density or the transparency of the lightsaber blades and you can see the old transparent purple versus the new kind of frosted purple and the frosted purple is a better representation of what lightsabers are more like in star wars because they obviously aren't transparent so that is a really nice change to see and i assume we'll see that on really like every jedi and sith going forward i can't imagine we wouldn't but this is the first time i think we're getting that in any set and here we have the 187th Airborne, no, Clone Commander. Why is he a Clone Commander and not an Airborne Trooper? Well, apparently the 187th Legion was made by Hasbro in the 2000s because Mace Windu needed purple clones for their toy line. And so these non-canon clones were just kind of made up and they decided, I guess, that the Airborne armor would represent the Commander. And so it works, I guess. It's something different and unique. He comes with the longer blaster rifle. You can see some of the uh, purple markings all over him. He's got the footprinting that they've been given clone troopers and it looks like he would have a waist cape, but LEGO really doesn't do the waist capes anymore, so he just printed some tan on there and called it good. I'm not sure if that's 100% what it's supposed to be representing, but that's what it looks like to me. You can see the back print's got some tan straps added onto that, and if we remove the helmet, it'll just be the regular clone head underneath. Nothing crazy, but very cool clone commander there. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. And finally, in this set, we get the two 187th Legion clone troopers. Like I said, based off Hasbro's clone troopers, not necessarily what we see in the Clone Wars briefly, which don't look anything like this. In fact, I don't even think they have purple markings on them. So yeah, this is something that's not canon technically, but I'm all for these not canon clone troopers and figures. The armor markings and everything are about as good as you would expect from a Lego clone trooper at this point. I still think some waist printing would be really, really nice and complete the look of these clone troopers, but maybe that's something Lego is saving for the future so they still have room to improve on their minifigures. I'm not really sure. It still kind of baffles me why they've gone with the white hips and not printed on it because they did do that back in 2005 with Stormtroopers. Maybe it's just too expensive. I don't know the reasoning. Nevertheless, this is probably an all-time great minifig selection for a set at the $40 price point. It's not a battle pack, but it does include three clone troopers alongside an awesome mace window with arm printing and two battle droids. It's nice to see LEGO finally flip things back to the way they always should have been with more clone troopers in a clone set than battle droids. And years past what you would see is the jedi and a clone trooper and then you'd get two battle droids thus leaving you with more battle droids than clone troopers in a clone trooper set 
This is the third version of the Republic fighter tank from Lego Star Wars, and I don't like it at all. But why don't I like it? I mean, you're more than welcome to like it, but I have some reasons for not liking it other than just blindly hating on Lego Star Wars to hate on Lego Star Wars, because like I just said, this set does have great minifigs, so I mean, that's a little contradictory, isn't it? Anyway, point being, this set is a mixture of two versions of the Republic fighter tank, and the, the best way I can describe it is probably not an apples to apples comparison, but basically like the at, -AT is the AT, at from Hoth. It's not the at, -AT plus the ATM6 or plus the at -ACT. It is the at, -AT. There's essentially two versions of the Republic fighter tank, the IFTX variant from the older Star Wars Battlefront games around 2005, and the TX-130 variant from the more modern Star Wars Battlefront games. And what you'll notice with the OG 2005 fighter tank model is it does kind of have that nose-looking feature for the fighter tank, where it's got this big bump on the front, and that is finely represented here, actually. However, it does not have flat sides, which the TX-130 variant from the newer Battlefront games does have. So you can see this LEGO set does have the flat sides that the, the newer Battlefront model has. However, in addition to flat sides, the TX-130 variant of the fighter tank should also have a very flat front nose area. I guess it would be lacking a nose essentially, but yeah, it shouldn't have this big belly or baby bump or whatever you want to call it on the front of the fighter tank. And the final thing that really irks me design-wise is these big white pieces that come all the way down near the front of the fighter tank here when they really should be about half the depth here. They should not be running that far to the front of the fighter tank. You can see on the front of the fighter tank models from both battlefronts that these white panels essentially aren't present. They, they should be about half the size they are, possibly even more shallow than that. However, while I don't like the look of it from that perspective, I do understand the functionality of having this wall essentially come this far forward, and that is so that you can actually have an interior space here. So, you can open up this nose, and voila, you have a very large interior space because of these walls. If they were shallower, like they should be in a more accurate version of this build, uh, you wouldn't quite have that space there to spare. So you've got studs on the bottom of the fighter tank that allow you to place one of your 187th troopers into it, and he can therefore be piloting it. There is unfortunately no control panel or anything in front of him. There is definitely space where one could have been, although I guess from the perspective of having a clean looking design when this is pulled forward, maybe not having it there was optimal, but... I definitely feel like there could have been a control panel there. I don't know, it just feels like one of those things, it's a playset for LEGO Star Wars and they always include that sort of thing, but it's just missing there. Or like a sticker on the inside maybe, they've done that sort of thing before, but yeah, it's just not there. Another function I do really like about this set is kind of the loading ramp or back door, so you can actually drop it down and you can have your clones, or I guess Mace Window as well, walk up and into the fighter tank. So if we actually pull up the front piece as well, you can see it's just a clean shot straight through. You can see our clone trooper sitting in there right now, but there's a little bit of extra space in there with kind of a CMF stand. And then looking at it from the other side, there is enough space behind the clone trooper where you could realistically fit another minifigure. I mean, I guess I could stuff a clone trooper in there, but like, that's not really appealing. And then even the space right below where we're gonna put our clone commander, like you can see it barely fits a clone and you can't even close it up. So it doesn't look like that space there is particular. Oh, actually maybe you can just stuff them in like that. Yeah, maybe, I guess. I, I don't really know why you would because it is not easily accessible at all. But if you really need a spot for an extra trooper, you can stuff them in there. Moving up to the hatch on top, it is something that can be a bit tough to grip at, but you basically just pull at the stud there and it pulls right up. And you'll see inside there actually is a control panel, which makes it a little more baffling to me why there wasn't a control panel up there. But nonetheless, control panel and then some studs there for your clone commander to either stand or sit on. In this case, I'll stand him up and you can see he sees right over the top and can look over the battlefield from the top of his tank and shoot at the clankers. However, if we sit him down, so he's a little bit lower there, he still won't fit with the hatch closed. So that is unfortunate. I would have loved to be able to fit him in there with the hatch closed somehow, but that is just not something that you're gonna be able to achieve with this particular set. With the clone out of the way again, I must say it is incredibly satisfying how nicely the hatch and the white round part of this set come together. It's just a perfect match. Looking to either side of the build, you'll see a cannon and that cannon can move up and down with a pretty good range of motion. It is stopped by the spring-loaded shooter when it is is inserted so if we actually shoot that off you'll be able to push the gun back all the way to shoot behind it which is pretty neat so it allows for some versatile play I suppose. Final thing about the cannons in this set is they have a weird quirk where they aren't actually flush with the side of the fighter tank so you can see you actually get a slightly weird movement with these and it seems to be caused by the middle bump of the Technic pin there which slightly juts out due to the way this is built. Not exactly sure why they went with that but it's not something that I think I've ever seen on Lego Star Wars set before so I just thought it was worth mentioning. It's weird. Moving to like
like the engines and running board area, you can see the Republic logo as well as two stickers here. Yep, those are two separate stickers. There's a gap, small gap right there, but I put them as close to each other as I could so that they lined up perfectly and that's how I would recommend doing it if you do get this set because that is a thing with Lego stickers sometimes that they end up with big gaps if you're not careful. So I definitely alleviated that issue by being careful. Continuing back down the side of the build, we can see kind of the engine block area. And then before we take a look at the bottom side, I should show you the eyes for this thing, kind of the translucent dark gray pieces that they use that kind of give this nice translucent window look and I think it works out really well with that. I like the shaping of the eye area for this set a lot. The bottom of the fighter tank as you would expect is pretty bland however it does have four wheels. You can see the four black wheels there and those are what allow the fighter tank to look like it's hovering when you play with it. So you can play with it, push it around. It has a little bit too much friction for my liking so basically if I push this, it stops before getting very far. But uh, yeah, I suppose it's nice for kids that just want to be able to roll it around, but I definitely wouldn't mind a little more of a free flow to the movement of this thing because it feels like it just stops on a dime when you let go of it. So is the 2022 Republic Fighter Tank worth the $40 price tag? Surprisingly, yes. Mostly for the minifigs, in my opinion. I think getting the best Mace Windu ever is, is definitely a draw alongside three 187th Clone Troopers, two Battle Droids is whatever to me. But really, these four figures here are the saving grace of this set to me because this build I am not very hot on. I do not think it looks very good. If, if you think differently, that's great for you because I think that makes this set way more than worth $40 for a lot of people, but alone for the figures, I think it's worth it too. As someone who likes to army build on top of their normal collecting, I, I want more of these clone troopers, but I don't want any of the baggage that comes with them, you know? I'm giving this set a 7 out of 10 because getting six minifigs in a $40 set for LEGO Star Wars is like unheard of. So seeing that just makes me happy and especially in a clone trooper set. Can't go wrong with that. So let me know what you guys think about it in the comments section below. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed this review and you can check out more LEGO Star Wars 2022 set reviews on the end screen now.